Hey y'all, welcome back to Our Road Less Traveled, the Stranded Edition. Yeah. So, earlier this morning, uh, Maria posted video of the truck being hauled off and we thought, uh, really we didn't have time yesterday to put anything together for that. So that's what this video is about, is basically what happened to the truck. Um, nor did we have the mental capacity. <laughs> uh, nor were we in the... <laughs> Headspace. <laughs> yeah, we, some of us were pretty hot. Um, so we're going to walk over to a table here and sit down because some of y'all claim or have stated that you don't like seeing me multitask and you don't want me walking while I'm talking. So we're going to sit down at a table in this nice campsite. We're going to run through the details what happened to, we haven't even named the truck, but what happened to them. Some nice person even commented that Clay couldn't multitask at all. He couldn't walk and talk at the same time. So. Yeah, I <laughs> had some definite opinions about me personally. If you want to see some funny comments and some rude comments, Go look at our South Dakota videos because there's plenty of them there. All right, so what happened? <laughs> um, before we get into that, let's thank the people that that really made our, our day a whole lot easier. Um, one, Greg and Kim from We RV. <clears throat> Thanks for answering the, the phone call. Um, Greg helped me do some initial Googling because we didn't have cell service. Uh, well, we had cell service, but we didn't have enough cell service to actually get data transmission. So Greg was Googling some of the stuff that I was finding on the truck and got us at least to where we could find an auto zone and get an OBD2 reader to, to scan the truck to see what was going on. Second, Reed and Connie. Um, one, we love Reed and Connie anyway because they introduced us to Dutch Brothers and have an amazing story. Um, <laughs> and the Dutch Brothers just happened to be right behind where we were yeah. stranded. So. so Reed was actually taking the troubleshooting codes that came off, came off the OB2 reader and checking what the P codes were for me, letting me know what, what those were. Um, and again, generally just being on the phone, you know, moving things forward was, was a big deal. Um, Todd and Sheila from Switch It Up, the Switch Crew, who basically put out a call to all the members um, offering help. If, during if any, their huddle. Yeah, during their the huddle, by the way. Um, couldn't couldn't say enough uh, about that. And you know, if if any of you are on the road full time, you know you're you're kind of like an advanced scout team. You know, you you've got support crew behind you, but in the thick of it is is just you two. So having those people to rely on and, and yeah. call or was, was a really big deal. Yes. Um, meant a lot to us, but Pete and Lisa West, um, who saw a Facebook post, didn't know us from Adam to drive 30, 45 minutes to, to come help us out. When the transmission failed, the truck had, was so low on power. It would not pull itself out from underneath the, the fifth wheel. We, we had the feet raised. We had a good quarter inch gap of the, the pin box off of the fifth wheel plate. And it did not have enough power to pull itself out from underneath the fifth wheel. Pete had to hook up chains to it and literally pull the, the truck out from underneath the fifth wheel because it couldn't do it on its own. That's how bad that transmission was. Yeah. Um, it's been all day... Yeah, helping us literally all day and then hauled the rig an hour to a campground that we could only stay in for three days that he agreed to come back and haul us another hour to a different campground that we can actually get into long term i have no words to to say to pete and lisa um i, I don't think webster's dictionary has a string of words that they have published yet that would go into the level of appreciation that we have for those two. It is hard to express it without getting teary eyes. It, it sure. really is. <clears throat> um, and the only, the only, th and he didn't even ask for it. 
the the only thing he really wanted in return was a handshake and a hug. I mean, that's and a sticker <laughs> and a sticker. Um, they do have a YouTube channel, and if if y'all they have a, <clears throat> they have, they. They've started a YouTube channel, but they really have a Facebook and Instagram post uh, right. presence. And it's West's on the move. Mm -hmm. West's on the move. So if y'all will do us a favor, and if nothing else, go follow their channel or like their post. Do something to get them some exposure. Because if there are two people on this earth that deserve a little bit of credit and a little bit of sunshine, these two are, are those. Go leave them a fist bump, high five, a... Uh, some. heart a comment some love on their page <laughs> so let's talk about what happened to the truck um and if we forgot anybody i'm sorry well the we also have family and friends that reached out that were we, we are, did have family the, family and friends community. that reached out there there are two other channels that that constantly are i, I feel like are, are our cheerleaders yeah. that that we have not met yet that we're you know extremely looking forward to, to meeting and that's red, ja red jaguar yeah love that guy <laughs> I, i've never met him but i i i love him i yeah. mean he's, he's just i love his videos um i love his content yeah the other one that we found about two months ago is sucker free <laughs> and again i have not met this guy all I know is that the stuff that he puts out, I really enjoy watching. Always puts um, a smile on her face. Always. <laughs> when, when we're having a bad day, that, that's one of the places we, we go to watch some, some good content that, that's going to make us feel better about the world. So, so stay sucker free and tighten up. And tighten up. <laughs> <laughs> um, now let's get into what, what happened with, with the truck. Um, so about a week ago, I noticed that in in first gear, starting off from a, a red light, the truck just did not seem to have enough power to cross two lanes of traffic till it hit second gear, then power built and you know it, it took off. So I actually called Ram Care about this and they said, well, take it into a dealership. We've got to have a, a diagnostic on it, but the diagnostic has to be within two weeks of, of you calling us. So we were in Colorado Springs. We had just gotten the oil changed we were getting ready to head to Wyoming and I thought maybe I would just have that done in Laramie um, because we were running out of time to get all our, our stuff straightened out. Well, we got everything hooked up. We, we left, was it a Friday? Mm -hmm. Left on a Friday, left Colorado Springs, had no problems um, between Colorado Springs all the way up to Denver, um, Except, other than yeah. massive traffic. Right, we were stuck in traffic. And it, stop it, and go traffic it was for stop and go. two hours, but solid I, two hours. I monitored the the transmission temperature and the engine temperature, and you know normal operating temperature on the transmissions 163, 164 degrees. We never got over 170 in stop and go traffic. So we're in in traffic. You know we had both drank quite a bit of water because Colorado you have to drink water. It'll your mouth dries out, your lips dry up. I mean, it's, so we're, we're chugging water. We've been on the road for three and a half hours. We need to dehydrate. So we pull up on, I think it was exit 252 off of I-25. Westminster. Westminster. Nice area. Very nice. Notice that there's a Walmart. So I exit off, we come to a, a slow stop because there's three cars in front of us at the red light. In the video, you'll hear, you, you can see the truck go, <clears throat> and Maria go, did we just get hit? What happened was it at that point, we dropped first through fourth gears, gone. The light changes, I hit the gas. I don't know that, that we've lost the gears yet. Light changes, turns green, I hit the gas. It goes to 3000 RPM. And the truck shutters. <laughs> Lights go off everywhere. Check engine light comes on. Message comes up. Four-wheel drive temporarily unavailable. Um, I swear at some point a middle finger shot up and said, your day's screwed. <laughs> so I put the truck in park. And I'm just kind of in shock because this truck has 20,667 miles. miles on yeah. it. 
So we're sitting there and Maria's doing Maria things, you know, what's this, what's that, you know, she, whatever she's doing. Um, I'm, I'm logical and technical. I'm trying to think in my head, what are the systems on this truck that could be affected that I can reboot to possibly clear this and, and get us off of a, an off ramp. So I turn the truck off, open the door to kill everything, turn it back on and get absolutely nothing. Um, same symptoms. So I put it in drive and run it up to 3,500 RPM and it creeps up to the red light. Um, and I'm just praying that that light turns green so that we don't stop this, this momentum. And you can hear Maria, come on girl, which I think actually helped. <laughs> So we, we made the turn. We made it into Walmart. We, we got to where we were far enough away out where we weren't near anybody. Um, and it just so happened that off to our left was a Dutch Brothers. So we shut everything down. We went and got some coffee. Went back to the rig. And that's where, you know, the people we listed came into play is that, you know, we first called Greg. And, you know, Greg helped us find a place where I could get the tuner because I thought if I could clear the code based on the research that Greg did, Thought maybe the computer just had a hiccup, just needed to reset it, clear the code, and we would be good. So we called an Uber. I went to an AutoZone, picked up the, the code reader. Because um, at this point, it was getting dark. Yeah, deleted the code, um, unplugged the batteries, waited 20 minutes so it would fully drain, complete reset of the vehicle, fired it back up, same thing. It was at that point that we knew... We, we were probably in trouble. So Reed reached out and Reed started running through the trouble codes that we were getting on the tuner. And that's when we knew we were in trouble. Um, I'm not going to mention Ram care because they were absolutely awful. Um, it's just going to make me mad. And we do have an in with Stellantis. Um, I'm not going to give his name and his telephone number, uh, but he has assured me that he will reach out to the dealer that we had it towed to Monday to find out what's going on with it. The issue, so from the best that I can, can figure out, um, and there's a big long document that, that is tracking these ISIN transmission issues. It's, it's a Google doc run by a, a private group of people that are tracking the known issues of people that are looking for information. So it's not 100% comprehensive of everybody that's had the issue but it's consistent with the people that are having it. You can Google ASIN K1 snap ring issue and you'll, you can find this document. Found this on um, HD Ram forum, something like that. Um, it, it's a forum that I'm in for Ram trucks. Anyway, what happened is in 2021, November and December through January or February of 23, there was a manufacturing error in the way that a channel was, was cut out in the transmission for the snap ring that holds the clutch pack inside the ISIN. Now that, that doesn't mean that every transmission that was manufactured in that time range has the issue. It just means that that those are the outliers for when the earliest and latest issues have been resolved or found so far. So that's the, that's the range. Stellantis and Ison have been absolutely mum on this issue. No data whatsoever. They won't release what transmission months um, were, were the issue. The, it's, it's thought based on the documentation that's known so far, um, that if your ISIN transmission was built in April through July of 22, you have a better than average chance of having a snap ring failure. Um, now, what, what does that mean? Um, typically, the failure happens in the first 1,000 miles up to 6,600 miles. Ours is like the second one that's been reported that was right around the 20,000 mark. Now, this is like the, the worst kept secret in RAM high output ISIN transmission history. 
because you can call any dealer like I did to find where we need to send a truck to to find a place that's got a, a ISIN transmission specialist on staff. There, there are three and four ISIN transmission trucks at each one of the dealerships waiting for these parts. It's not a, a small thing. So anyway, the, the fix is if, if you have this problem, um, they can replace the, it's called a, a K1 TSB, the technical service bulletin on it. Um, they replace the, the clutch pack in it and the snap ring and you don't have any more problems. Where the issue comes into play is if you do what we had to do to get off the road and you force the truck to go forward after the failure, you basically throw metal shards all the way from the transmission cooler, um, all the way back through the, the transmission, the transmission lines, everything. Um, but we literally did not have yeah, a choice. We, we were not in a safe place no, to we, be stopped. We could, we could not stay on the off ramp in the left hand lane to turn left you know, right outside of Denver. With a 35 foot fifth wheel behind us. Right. Um, so anyway, we don't know for sure. We'll find out Monday if that's what it is. There are two other potential issues that, that could be wrong with the truck. So there were a bunch of trucks that were stalled in Mexico for several months for an ECU issue. That wasn't a Stellantis issue. That was a Cummins issue because Cummins is the one that is sent out the ECU with the 6.7 liter diesel. I feel like ours, um, based on the documentation that I saw when we were waiting for it, ours was actually held for 30 days for that ECU update. So I feel like our ECU was already updated and that's not the issue. The other issue that has similar symptoms to, to what we have is a PCM, which is a power control module. If that goes out, it can cause the transmission to act goofy, kind of like a K1 um, clutch pack failure so it could be that but the symptoms that, that we're seeing is more towards the snap ring failure and they're going to have to drop the transmission so we will know all of this supposedly monday tomorrow when they run the codes and check the pcm the ecu um, but we won't actually know if they're going to be able to rebuild the transmission or if it's going to be a new transmission until they they drop it and we don't know when they'll be able to drop it so we could be here a while we could be here a while um my contact with stellantis has assured me that if they can't immediately start working on the transmission of the truck that stellantis will pick the truck up and take it to another dealership that is free to immediately start working on it as soon as they can get parts so anyway that's where we're at um I don't want to say we're stuck in Colorado because we actually like Colorado. Um, mm -hmm. But it, I said yesterday to Pete, it could be worse. We could be stuck in Texas right now and be 120 degrees. It, and I'm yeah. thankful that we're not. <laughs> no offense to Texas, but. <laughs> or we could be stuck in North Korea. That would be just awful. <laughs> I don't know if we could. So that wraps up. <laughs> this week's I don't know that it wraps it up but no. it's the end of this so video to be continued again yeah. uh, we'll keep you updated on our situation and I uh, guess we'll see you next time oh join us Thursday for our live at 7pm central and we'll see you either then or on our road less traveled <laughs> yeah if, if you want the unfiltered Un Maria protected, unedited version of what happened. Show up to our Thursday live and and ask the question. You will absolutely get an honest answer with no filter whatsoever as to to what went on. And is that what we're talking about Thursday? I thought we were doing story hour. Are we not doing that any longer? I uh, I thought we were going to do whatever they asked. Okay, so. Anyway, comment or message us or email us some of your craziest, weirdest, or most amazing RV stories. So we'll this share could be some. Interesting. We'll share some of ours and. Hey, don't share it public if if it's you know send it private. No, unless you want everybody to see it. Don't. I mean. But we'll share them if they're. I mean. Yeah, if, if you send it to us, it's getting you shared. I guarantee you yeah. that. I'm just saying. 
Yeah. We want to hear some other crazy stuff that's happened to other people, and we want to share some of ours. So. Yeah. We've got some doozies. All right. We'll see you next week on our Road Less Travel. Bye, y'all.